Well, hello and welcome to my third Blender tutorial, this one on how to animate mouth and eyes in Blender for our Lego characters that we will put into our Food, Energy, Water, Nexus landscapes that we create in our Navigating the Food, Energy, Water, Nexus course at USF Florida. So, my friends, we are going to start by exporting a head from MLCAD the Lego creator, and we're going to do it this time by clicking on this minifig generator down here. And that's not in the, uh, in the menu up here, so you need to look for it down here in this menu. I guess that toolbars you can find it, but it's uh, mode bar, main bar, it's not the mode bar, it's not the main bar, it's not the transformation bar, controller bar, status bar, it's the extras bar. So that's the tool that you want on, and then you have here mosaic generator, rotation model, fractal generator, spring generator, rubber belt, flexible hose, arrow, plates. There's a lot you can do with this program. We're just using the basics. So we go to the minifigure generator and we are going to export a head stud solid and we don't need any of the other parts. So you could spend your time going through here and going to none and do the same thing for the hands. You could say none and away they would go. You can say none for this, but it's just as easy <clears throat> to uh, put this into the current file here. And then you do your erasing by clicking on parts and hitting delete. In fact, you can draw and select everything and delete it. So that just gives you a head and because we're going to be animating the mouth, we don't want to have any mouth from this or eyes from this. We just want the head as a head. So having that, and then you can save it. My export function doesn't work, but that isn't a problem. I'm going to save this head as, uh, let me find a place to save this. We will go into documents and we will go into Lego software of Blender Biogas tutorials. More aware is a better place than that. We can go into Lego software I'm putting this into Killian's models and just call this plain head. So that's our plain head. Now I can close this program and open up Lego Draw View and take plain head and put it in. And as you can see, there's the plain head, which can be rotated and it's got nothing on it. It's just a plain Lego head. The rotation tool. Okay, so now we go to export, and you can export it as either an STL for 3D printing or as a 3D Studio file. Let's go ahead and use 3D Studio file this time, 3DS. And now when we go into Blender, there's that wonderful cube. We're going to hit X to delete the cube, and we are going to import the SD 3D, sorry, the 3DS 3D Studio head. It's in the Killian's model. There it is, plain head, and in it comes. The advantage of using the 3DS as opposed to the STL is you also get all the materials with it. Came generated. Alrighty, let's see. Hitting zero, what the camera sees. Perfectly fine, I suppose, although I never like the default setting here. 
I really do like to select my camera and then move it in a location that is uh, Y negative 8. This is my usual procedure. And then X equals 0. And then the Z we can leave for now. And I also like to change the rotation of this to 68, I think it is. Maybe it's not. Let me rotate RZ, rotate in Z. So it's facing down the alley here. And now when I hit zero, let's see what it looks like. And then I hit the G key and I can move my head like that. That feels better to me. Uh, the rotation, turns out it was about 68. It's the Z rotation, that's the rotation it should be. If we hit zero, there we are. And then let's lock that position for now. All right, so we have our, our head. Now what we want to do is create the eyes <clears throat> and the mouth. So to do that, I'm going to object, sorry, I'm going to add mesh, and I'm going to add circles for the eyes. The circle is here. You can't see it. There it is. And let's move that circle up here. And we have to ro rotate that about the x-axis by 90 degrees. So you can type here 90 and move that eye up. Of course, hit the 7 key to go to the top. Come in and bring those spectacles out there. Duplicate it and make another eye like that. And then select both of them and shrink them down with the S key. There's your Google eyes. Now, of course, I want them spread out, so I'm going to move this over a little bit and move this one over a little bit. Maybe they're a bit too big, so let's select both of them again and shrink them down. All right. Now, of course, to make them eyes, they need to have some surface. So what I'm going to do for the surface, make a face for them, and that is to select one of the eyes and go into edit mode and then mesh and, sorry, face, 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 transform, faces, control F, and then make, whoops, let's do this again, faces is control F, and then we want to fill like that. Okay. Yep. And do the same thing, leave edit for there, go in here. Let's go to edit mode and then go to mesh and faces. You can also do make edge or face. And I think that may be a better way to do it, actually, because the idea here is that when you are going to edit it and make it blink, you want to be able to go into edit mode. There's tab into edit mode. Select this and then hit scale S and Z to scale it in the Z axis to make the eye close. Um, sometimes if there's too many polygons, Let's see here, like this, it becomes more complex than this one here, which is cleaner. Uh, they both should work in this case. Um, but you have to watch out sometimes for that. We're going to leave it as it is, though. And so now we have our eyes. This one came in black. This one is gray. I'm going to go to the materials window and give this a material. Make it black. And let's see, this didn't have a material. So I'm going to make this black. There we go. Still seem a bit big, don't they? So S, scale them down, and then 
a little small scale up and independently select each eye and move it. Now we need to create a mouth. So creating a mouth is a matter of hitting add mesh plane and rotate this plane along the x-axis by 90 degrees also. And then you're in object mode, scale it in the z direction. Let's move it along the y-axis, try to center it a bit. These eyes, by the way, let me right click on this eye and right shift click on this eye and move them back against the head. And actually move them down a little bit, that's better. Now this mouth needs to be made into a Lego mouth. <clears throat> so to make this into a Lego mouth, I'm also going to hit S and Y. No, I didn't mean that. I meant S and X. And shrink it down a little bit. We're in user perspective, by the way, so I'm going to hit 5 for user ortho. And we're also in the front by hitting the one key. So we're in front ortho now. Okay, so I have a mouth. It's not a true Lego looking mouth at this point. So to make it a more Lego looking mouth, what we want to do is go into edit mode with tab and then go to um, make, no, sorry, loop cut and slide. And we are going to make a box there. And then we're going to go to loop cut and slide and make another one there. And then we're going to go to loop cut and slide and make another one there. And loop cut and slide and make another one there. And loop cut and slide and put one in the middle. We're also going to want to turn up the corners here. So I select this vertex, vertex and hit G and move it. And hit this vertex and move it. And I have a bit of a smile going on now. Bit of a smile here. So you can play around with the vertices to give your figure a bit more personality. All right, now we have a smiling mouth. Once again, so we go tab back into the, um, that wasn't very good, hold on. Um, go back, tab into the object mode, and then go and add a material to this and make it jet black. All right. And now that we've done that, we can start doing our animation. Doing the animation is working with shape keys. And to do that, you go up to these vertices looking triangle here and down here is shape keys and you hit plus now that becomes the basic mouth and you can say basis or basic mouth you don't mess with that then you add another one key one and i'm going to call that the closed mouth and what you do with shape keys is you keep the closed mouth selected. That's a value of zero. And the value of zero is going to be what basic mouth is. But when we distort it by going into edit in tab, selecting our whole mouth, and then hitting S for scale along the Z axis, you can close the mouth and that's closed mouth. And then when we tab out of that, 
it seems to go back to its original state, but when we change the value here from 0 to 1, it makes the mouth close. And that can be set as a keyframe. <clears throat> so what we can do now is create another window down here by dragging on these three drag bars. Oops, that was not the right way I wanted to drag. Let's drag down, there we go. And have this bottom window be a dope sheet where you add your keyframes. <clears throat> and so what we can do is we can say the guy's gonna start with his mouth shut. So we have closed mouth and we have the value at one. And we set our keyframe by holding the cursor over value and hitting I, and it turns yellow. And then he's got his mouth closed, and somewhere around a second, since I'm doing 15 frames per second, a second in, I want him to open his mouth. So the first thing I have to do is make sure his mouth stays closed until it opens. So to do that, I see that these three keyframe uh, indicators are orange. If I click A, they're deselected and they're now white. I click it again, they're orange. I do Shift D and I drag out, that's a duplicate, and that keeps the mouth closed for the first, oh, 14 frames. But on the 15th frame, I want him to suddenly open his mouth. So at that frame, I bring the value down to zero and I hit on holding my cursor over the dope sheet, I hit I, no I don't, I hold it over the value and hit I and I get a keyframe there. So now all of a sudden he opens his mouth. Hi, hi seems to take about two seconds, hi, and then he closes his mouth. So let's keep his mouth open. We will deselect everything, now select just the open mouth, hit Shift D, and move those out for a second high. And then he keeps his mouth open that long. Then I'm gonna duplicate the closed mouth, Shift D, and move that over. And so he goes high, and then he closes his mouth over a few seconds. And you can mess with the rate of that high. And then hit Shift D while those are selected to have his mouth stay closed for a certain amount of time. And that's the basic trick to doing the animation. You can keep selecting then these keyframes, Shift D, copying them, Shift D, keeping them, uh, the orange line saying keeping them in that position for a certain time. And when you scroll through, you get a motion. Hi. Hi. You have hi, how are you? Now, if I say how are you, then the mouth doesn't just open and close. It has to go ow into an O shape. So to do the O shape, let me save this and save this as um, face animation Lego head. And actually, that should go into the Lego tutorial. So we want to have an O mouth. Now for that, I can create another shape key, which I'll say O mouth. And while I'm in O mouth, which looks identical to the original basic mouth, which you never touch, and it doesn't even have these uh, value parameters in it. What I will do is go back into edit by hitting tab, and I'm going to start messing with this by going S in X to shrink the mouth, but then taking individual vertices and starting to distort them to create and oh, although I just realized something, I'm going to hit uh, I'm going to hit Control Z and undo that because our jaws are what do most of the work. The jaw dropping, uh, the mouth opening by turning the lips down. 
So we can drop the jaw a little bit, jaw dropping. And you can decide how much effort and time you want to put into making a beautiful mouth. But even if we want to curl the lip up a little bit to make the O, we can curl that lip up like that. So you basically have this O. So there's an O shape. Now you can, of course, then tab out of this. And because we set that during edit, as we shift, we can O, O. All right. So now we wanted to say hello. We want the O to be somewhere in here. I'm going to take this and hit G and move it back a little bit. Now we have to have that O mouth set at zero before we start manipulating. So I'm going to hit I over this. And now that we get over here, hello, and we want this to turn into an O, I then move my value up and I hit my keyframe and it's hello. And I'm going to have to duplicate that. Hello, hello. What did I do wrong here? That's okay. I just dragged this out. Actually, these should have been G dragged back a little bit. Hello. So it's a little slower and I can drag these out. But now I want to hit Shift D and keep the O for a few seconds. So it's hello. And then it's going to have to settle back into a resting phase. But that should happen fairly quickly. Hello and the mouth shuts. So so now comes the tricky part because you want to integrate different shape keys. And we've got the mouth going into the O formation. Now we want to come out of that O formation. So it is critical that when we get to our next keyframe, we make sure that we have duplicated the extreme. So we have this going all the way. It's 0 and 1, 0 closed mouth, the O mouth at 1, full strength. Because selecting down there, now when we come out here, we want to make the closed mouth 1, and the open mouth 0, and hit I for, for both of those. And now it just shuts and so when we hit play hello hello it's not a great animation by any means at this point and yet you can see how it begins to play now when you want to work with this hit escape to stop this what you can do is change the timing in your dope sheet so that when it starts, this is obviously much too long for the mouth to remain open. So I hit G and move these back. And then when I, actually let me change the end of this. We're only going for about 100 frames. So let's change this to 100, the end frame. And then we can play it better. But hello. So that's obviously too long. So we shift the whole thing over here. Whoops. Shift this over. Shift the ending over. And play around with... That's backwards. Play around with the timing of it. That was bizarre. Let's get this. Drag it back. So it's open way too long. Let's drag this back. And we don't need this going back to the smile. 
So that's uh, got to get out of there. Hit delete on those keyframes. There we are. Maybe it's getting a little better now. Except it's really too slow. Escape. Stop this. And start moving things around, showing how the dope sheet works. And I'm going to shift select those and those and those. Move everything back over there. And play with your timing. Hello. You can spend a long time making it even better, but that gives you the basic idea of how to do it. At the same time, you want the eyes to blink. And to make the eyes blink, you go through the same procedure. You select an eye, and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to name this eye left. And I'm going to name this one eye right. And I will go to I left and add the shape key, the basic, add another one. It becomes my key. And call this closed. And now that I'm on closed, I go tab into edit. Hit S for scale, Z for the axis I want to scale, and scale it into a closed position. Then I go S and X to make it a little wider. Seems to look better that way tab out of it, and now this eye closes. Perhaps that's not enough of a blink. It's not closed enough. So I'll go back into edit again, and S is he, close it a little more, and then tab out of it. So now it closes. So there's a bit of a wink there. Do the same thing here. Add a shape key, add another key, make this closed, and hit the tab key to edit S and Z to scale in the Z axis, and then S and X to widen it out a little bit, and then tab out, and now that closes. So what we are able to do now is we're able to take that eye, and along the way as he's talking, we can have, as his mouth closes, we can have him blink by changing the value. Well, first, we have to add the open eye, so let's hit I to make that. And then we can come in a little bit later, move the value very quickly up to 1, and hit the I key to set the keyframe, and then very quickly uh, thereafter, Open the eye up again by changing the value to zero. And once we have that blink, we can apply the same blink to the other eye at the same time. We can hit I to set this, go to the next keyframe, which um, there is a way to go to the next keyframe. I don't know what it is. So we'll go to the next keyframe and bring the value to the closed value, hit I, and then go to the next and open the I up again and hit I, and then we get a blink, a very rapid blink. Then, of course, you can select, let's hit A to deselect everything. And use the B key for the bounding box and select your eyes. And we can shift D and duplicate those and put eye blinks by keep shift Ding wherever we want to. And then when we play the animation, it's backwards, great. Play the animation, then his mouth moves and his eyes blink. Now, if that blink looks too quick to you, which to me it does, then you can take these and 
these others, in fact, use the bounding box. That's the closed position. You can open these things up a little bit more so that the blink lasts a bit longer. So you have the ability to play with all of this. And uh, just see how it works for you. Now this mouth, of course, needs to be pulled back a little bit if you're going to do side views. You can also you can also stop the animation, hit escape, and you could go into this and bend these vertices back. And then what you can do, go into Z for transparency, go into edit mode, and take the vertices, shift click, that are offensive, and select them and bend them in until they touch. And then you can go and grab the other vertices that you have. And bend them in and basically plaster the mouth as much as you can onto onto the face. You can do this as much as you like until you have a mouth that sits and looks okay in any angle, the animation will still work. It's just that it's now mapped a little tighter onto the face. You see, when you play that. So that's the basic idea with animating a mouth. And the nice thing is that you can then continue to adjust these if you think that they're not in the right place while you're playing your animation. So hope that you've enjoyed that and it's giving you some basic ideas of how to do a quick Lego animation.